All right, let's do this. What's going on everybody, Zidane here once again. Welcome back to the channel. And today we're going to talk about PC versus console. A lot of people have been messaging me asking me, hey, do I get a PC? Do I get a console? Like, what should I do? I already want to get back into gaming. I've been gaming a few years. So this is pretty much a video to help answer all those questions and see which one would benefit you the most. Also, if you're just interested to know what my opinions are on PC versus consoles, then definitely go ahead and listen to the video. We're going to start with the PC Pros first. The first and foremost pro of the PC is that it can do anything you want on it. Basically, you can go on a PC, you can use it for school, you can use it for work, you can put games on it, you can do productivity work, you can do content creation, you can do just about anything that you can think of. With consoles, you're pretty much limited. When it comes to pound for pound on PC use, PC definitely wants the multiple use category. And now when it comes to customization, which is the second thing that's good about a PC, you can customize the settings in your games. You can customize the colors on your PC if you have RGB on it. You can pick the color of your case, the color of your cooler. You can pick what type of processor, hard drive, graphics card you want. Basically anything you want in your PC, you can customize it. The third pro on a PC, when you think about PC gaming, is multiple storefronts. When I say multiple storefronts, I mean you can choose from Steam, Green Man Gaming, GOG, Frantical, Humble Bundle, Epic Games, Ubisoft, EA. Like, there's so many storefronts you can pick from. So if you see a game that's on sale or a game that you really want, you can compare the prices on these different storefronts and you can nine times out of ten get them for cheaper from one of these other storefronts sales are always going on on each and every one of them for example steam has a summer sale going on there might be summer sales going on, on other storefronts like humble bundle or gog and even when there's not sales going on you can definitely find these some of these sales on slitdeals.net you can find games like i just found mortal kombat ultimate on sale for like ten dollars like i was like oh okay let me let me grab that even though i had it on ps4 but grab it on pc get the higher frames there you go the fourth great pro about PC is free online. Well, granted, you still have to pay for your internet. You gotta pay for your internet for everything nowadays, but you do get to play multiplayer games online for free. You don't have that paywall that you have to pay in order to say, play your friends on Xbox or PlayStation 4. Like with a PC, you can pretty much just hop on it and you can go ahead and play with your friends and communicate with them through various software programs and you can also do crossplay with certain games like borderlands or um soon to be destiny 2 or outriders and you'll be able to play for your friends still now and then i do get on my pc and play call of duty with some old call of duty friends so it's good to be able to do that and not have to pay the extra paywall in order to play with those friends the fifth pro on PC is backwards compatibility. Now you can have a game like from way back when, like for example, Witcher, the first Witcher game. You can play that anytime you want. Just buy it on Steam, download it, install it, you're good to go. If you want to play something like Half-Life from way back in the day, buy it somewhere, download it, play it, you're good to go. Nowadays with consoles, you don't really have that full backwards compatibility like you should have, especially if you're a physical game collector, but you do kind of, you know, have once in a blue backwards compatibility like right now between PS5 and PS4 or Xbox Series S and Xbox One. But with the PC, you can do full backwards compatibility regardless of what year that game came out. As long as you have the proper software installed to play it, you can definitely go ahead and do it. The sixth pro on PC versus console for the PC is it's a learning experience. Now, when a lot of people look at PC, they believe that it's difficult to learn. It's difficult to know what to do. It's not something that you can learn right away. Let me tell you those things are wrong. When it comes to PC, anything where there's troubleshooting, putting it together, repairs, 
whatever it is when it comes to PC, if you have the knowledge or you don't have the knowledge, you can definitely go on multiple platforms like YouTube. Uh, there's a couple of free websites you can go to to learn, you know, different PC uh, know how to be able to build a PC or repair or troubleshoot. Hey, you can even go on Reddit and learn this stuff. Like, it, there's some good Reddit boards on there for PC things. Overall, when it comes to building a PC, it's like adult Legos. It's really expensive Legos, but it's like adult Legos. When it comes to doing repairs, you pretty much just, you know, look up the issue, see if there anyone else had the issue and go from there. For example, this right here is my little 30 minute PC repair kit. This pretty much resolves any issues a PC might have. Also, I'll be sure to do a video on this because I know some of you guys are curious about it right now. But as stated, that is a great learning experience if you're looking to learn how to build, repair, or troubleshoot PCs. I love doing it and I live and breathe this stuff. Now let's touch on those cons. What cons are there when it comes to PC? The first con when you think about PC building is the price. As of right now, things are stupidly overpriced. And the reason why things are stupidly overpriced, as everybody knows, is the silicon shortage, it's the scalpers, it's the bots, it's just everything right now is not meeting the demand that is out there for current PC hardware. Also, if you want a good solid PC, you're looking at least spending between $1,500 to $3,000, depending. And that's just regular price. If we were to price it right now, it'd probably be between, you know, four thousand, six thousand dollars, depending on what graphics card you wanted to get. The prices are just stupid, ridiculously high right now. The second kind, in my opinion, would be system requirements. Now, when you think system requirements, you can't just go out to the store, buy a game, and pop it into your system. You have to pretty much Look at the requirements that are listed for the game that you want to play. For example, like Cyberpunk or Assassin's Creed Valhalla or Control, which are pretty PC extensive games. If you just want to play them from the jump, just make sure you meet the minimum requirements. If you just want a great experience, you got to hit that recommended. And this kind of segues into my next con, which is optimization. When I say optimization, I don't mean just going into your game settings and making sure they're at the optimal point. I mean optimization based on how the developers develop the game for the PC. Now with consoles, you can just pop the game in and not have to worry about that. Everything is already optimized. Everything is like set to go. Everything's, you know, just pick up the controller pick up the controller get the plane but sometimes you have to make sure the games are optimized properly sometimes you can buy a game and say oh, okay i meet the requirements and everything and then you start playing the game and that game starts stuttering you start losing frames going from 60 to 30 to 15 and that's just something you really don't want to deal with so optimization is another thing that is kind of a issue when it comes to PC and I, I agree with this being on the con side of it. And the last con when it comes to PC is the repairs. Now when you think of repairs when it comes to a PC, nine times out of ten you can pretty much resolve what the problem is by you know looking it up online and checking it out and just making sure you have the money to replace the part or if there's something that you can just install to get rid of the issue. However, if you mistakenly mess up your graphics card or your processor or even your memory you have to buy a new one. You can't just send it over and get a replacement. However, when it comes to if anything breaks, like your processor, your graphics card, your memory, if you don't get that warranty, you're pretty much SOL. You have to go out and buy another one. Now, if you pay more than $700 for a graphics card, I don't understand why you wouldn't get the warranty, to be honest with you. Like, that should tell you right there, like, hey, heck, if I spend over $200 for something, I'm getting a warranty on it. However, since I am a PC tech guy, I don't really need the warranty because nine times out of 10, I can figure out what the problem is. But you should get your warranties. And granted, there are PC-centric shops that you can go to in order to get these repairs done, but they charge you a diagnostic fee, they charge you other fees just to take a look at everything, and you don't want to deal with all that. So to avoid these costs, either learn how to fix it yourself or just get the warranty on everything when you buy it. And I do know that places like Micro Center do bundle things together and allow you to get a warranty to cover everything under an umbrella. No, a lot of you sat through the PC part, so let's talk about the console part. So when it comes to console, if you're just gaming or you just want something that you can be able to game and watch movies on, 
consoles can do that at the best value price. I say that because when you look at a PlayStation 5 right now, for example, if you can get an MSRP, which is $500, you have your Blu-ray player for movies, you have your game console, you have your streaming device for your Netflix, your Hulu, your Disney Plus, your HBO Max, your Amazon, whichever one you look at. Because I know there's a lot of people that has more than one or every single one of them. But overall, if you're just gaming and you don't really care about all the additional stuff that a PC has to offer, you can definitely go right ahead, buy a console, you're good to go. And speaking of buying the console, that goes into my next part, which is plug and play. Now with consoles, you can just plug it into the wall, plug the HDMI cable into your TV, pick up the controller, get started, you're good to game. With PCs, you can't do that. You have to make sure you plug in the motherboard correctly and make sure the power supply goes from the power supply to the motherboard to the uh, certain port on it and then you have to double check these wires and that wire connect the other wires and then you have to it's too much wiring you have to sit there and actually make sure the wires are managed properly otherwise your whole pc is going to spark and catch fire i know what you guys are saying that that's impossible to happen i had it happen to me twice one time it sparked Second time it caught fire. So with plug and play, you basically buy it, it works. Same thing when you buy your games. You don't have to worry about requirements at all. You don't need to look that stuff up. You can just go out, buy your copy of Scarlet Nexus or your copy of Assassin's Creed or your copy of Outriders and bring it home, pop it on and download your data that you need to download. And once you're started, that's it. You're good to go. It's already optimized and everything and you don't have to worry about any other issues. And that comes to my next point when it comes to the third pro, which is optimization. Everything is already optimized on your console. So you don't have to worry about drop frames or stuttering. You do have to worry about stuttering if the game is actually frame extensive now that I think about it, because there's been many times I played Diablo 3 and the frames were just like, whoo. When it comes to optimization, just right out the gate, consoles where it's at. Like you cannot beat the optimization on any games when it comes to console. Another pro when it comes to console is like you you have your console exclusives. When you look at Nintendo, you have your Mario, your Pokemon, Xenoblade, Smash Brothers. When it comes to PlayStation, you have your Persona, you have your God of War, Horizon Zero Dawn, which is now on PC, shockingly. But that was an exclusive when it first came out. Ghost of Tsushima, that's a good one. And when you have up spots, you have Halo. Gears of War. All right, so now that we're done with the pros, let's go to the cons. Now, the first thing I think about when it comes to cons on the console is the storage space. Nowadays, when it comes to consoles, you're going to get at least one terabyte of storage space. Granted, some of that space is going to be taken up by the operating system for the console. One terabyte is standard for your consoles. Like, And think about it. Like, There's a lot of games that take up a lot of space. Look at Red Dead Redemption 2. That's over 100 gigabytes. And due to this lack of storage space when it comes to consoles, there's a constant need for extra storage, which is another con when it comes to consoles. You have to go out and buy a external USB drive, or you can get some consoles, you can get a internal drive, but you're limited to the amount of space you can use on an internal drive even. And then you can only put between two or four terabytes. Granted, you know, two or four terabytes, that's enough space unless you're a hardcore gamer like myself, but you still have that constant need for additional space. Which reminds me, I forgot to add a pro on the PC side, which is storage space. You can buy pretty much as much storage space as you need. All of it will work. You don't have to worry about it. But I digress. The next thing I think about when it comes to consoles, as far as the cons go, is paid online. You have to pay for your PSN. You have to pay for your Xbox Live. You have to pay for your Nintendo Switch online. It's ridiculous what you have to do in order to be able to play online with your friends. Granted, there are some benefits and perks when you do get these products. Like, you do get free games once a month, and you do get, you know certain things like discounts however when you think about it pay online sucks to be honest with you and i get it i've defended pay online programs for a long time but after a while when you think about it the lifespan at console is between five to ten years depending if you're spending between 60 to 100 dollars per year of console online membership if you have all three that's going to stack you to about over $200 a year, times that by five, that's $1,000. That's $1,000 you can put into a PC bill. 
But yeah, pay it online sucks. I said it there. I said it. I'm done defending it. Pay it online sucks. The other pro when it comes to consoles is backwards compatibility. Granted, you do have previous gen backwards compatibility now, but if you're a collector like me, having backwards compatibility is something that you need in your life. Like, I want to be able to play all my PlayStation 4 games. When I got my PlayStation 4, I wanted to be able to play all my PlayStation 3 games, so on and so forth. When it came to Xbox One, they, they still have backwards compatibility, but it's limited backwards compatibility. You can't play everything that you want to play, but there are most things that you can play when it comes to the backwards compatibility frame. And the last and final con when it comes to consoles would be the limited online store access. Now you're probably wondering, Zidane, what do you mean limited online store? Like I can just log into my console and go on to PlayStation Store or the Xbox Store and buy whatever game I want. Do you need me to repeat that? When I say limited store access, I mean limited store access. And that means whatever store you're on, you're limited to that store. Or you can go to a physical store like Best Buy, GameStop, whatever games, mom and pop store you might have in your area and buy your games from there. Now you can buy digital codes from places like GameStop or Amazon or Newegg, or you can get them from Best Buy as well. But if you want the game right away, you have to use the store on that console. All right, so that's the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Hopefully this has helped you determine what you want to get between PC and console. Me, I'm team games. It doesn't matter what it's on. As long as I have it, I'll play it. I really hope this helped. If you want more videos like this, like this versus that, let me know. I will definitely go on and make more videos just like it. But for now, thanks for watching. Make sure you drop a like and I will see you next time.